right, let's hit the field. Oh, wow. Just wanted to talk, that's all. It is leap day, February 29th, 2024, and the Yankees were taking on the Miami Marlins in a spring training matchup. First start of the spring for Clayton Beater. What the Yankees got for Joey Gallo. My recap, your reactions coming up next. This is NYY Recaps. Welcome to the Yankee Stadium. Just when they thought I was out, they pull me back in. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? We're about uh, 20 minutes early to the stream this time because of that uh, offensive explosion tonight. The good old-fashioned 0-0 zero, zero tie <laughs> in spring training. Oh, man, that's fun. Uh, look, a few people dm me tonight because they couldn't find the game. If you had trouble finding the game, you didn't miss a ton, definitely didn't miss a ton of offense, but it was in the New York area, streamed exclusively on the Yes app. Uh, and if you live outside the New York area, you can usually find it on the MLB TV app, uh, which is where it was today. Uh, sounds like it's going to be another year of having to have a master's degree from MIT to figure out the different platforms that you need to have uh, to watch the Yankee game. Uh, Pitching duel indeed. Hey, in case you didn't notice, uh, there was an extra day in February this year, but tomorrow is March, and the Yankee season begins in March. We are just 28 days from the season opener in Houston. No Judge tonight, no Soto tonight, no LeMahieu tonight. Um, no, we had LeMahieu. We had Torres, we had Rizzo, uh, we had Stanton. We had Verdugo, we had Volpe. So a lot of regulars, but not everybody. Volpe and Stanton had some nice moments, but overall the Yankees had two hits. So something we saw a lot of last year. So let's get to the recap. All right, let's go. Let's get it going. Chat starting to fill up. A lot of people talking about how good Clayton Beater looked tonight. Uh, and I have to concur, he looked terrific. He was on the mound wearing number 85, which is, to me, Luis Sessa's old number. Uh, I always liked Luis Sessa. But Clayton is somebody that I've been very interested in watching because I've never seen him pitch live, but I've heard a lot about him. Yankees traded Joey Gallo to the Dodgers a couple years ago, and Beater was the trade piece coming back. His numbers with the Dodgers were kind of rough, but he was a big prospect, and he almost immediately started pitching better with the Yankees. This is the first time I've seen him pitch live. He's a second-round pick out of Texas Tech. Excellent stuff. Mid-90s fastball, pretty much sitting at 94, 95 all night, which for February 29th is damn good. you got to think that when it warms up a little bit, he could probably sit around 96, 97, maybe touch 98, 99. That'll be beautiful. First thing that stood out to me in a very non-sexual way is how good his body is. Uh, he's got a great pitcher's build, the prototypical pitcher's build. Big, broad shoulders, strong lower half, big, thick arms. You can see why both the Yankees and the Dodgers scouts liked him. Uh, he kind of reminded me of a young Roger Clemens in terms of his physical size. Kerry Wood, another guy who's very similar, just big Texans, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, look, look very good. Another thing I like is that uh, – he was doing what pitching coaches would say is throwing downhill. Clayton Beater throws downhill. There's kind of an inside baseball term for his angle, and it's throwing downhill. He gets, he kind of has a little bit of an arch in his back, and then he comes directly over the top. And that good over-the-top uh, release gives him a nice backspin on the, on the baseball as I drop it on my keyboard here. Um, you know, kind of reminds me a little bit of – David Robertson, uh, Jordan Montgomery's that way, although he doesn't uh, throw the fastball as much. Andy Pettit had that kind of wind-up. You look at him, he, he was a guy who you know really leaned back. That's not something they typically teach for pitchers, but some guys do it, and typically those guys come directly over top. Yamamoto, another guy who comes pretty much directly over top, and it's just a really effective way to get good spin and good ride on the baseball. 
Uh, fastball is Major League ready right now. Breaking ball was a bit inconsistent. It looked to me like he was trying to throw a little bit of a slider, but typically with guys who have that arm angle, a nice 12-6 to curveball would be nice. Yamamoto, for instance, we saw that the other day in his debut. Really good 12-6 to curveball. Uh, maybe a split-fingered fastball. I know that um, there's a lot of people who think that the split-fingered fastball leads to more arm injuries, but uh, I saw an interview recently. I can't remember uh, who it was with, but it was with an expert on these things, and he said basically the fastball is still the most dangerous pitch for a pitcher's arm, and there's no evidence to show that a split-fingered fastball is actually worse for your arm. But a nice high over-the-top release point with a splitter could be a nice combination, especially if he mixes in a curveball. Anyway, I came away impressed. Three innings, three hits, no runs, one walk, four strikeouts. Very, very nice job. The beat goes on. Beat goes on. Forgot to mention, we have Clayton Peter. custom animations for the pitching this year as well. So we can take a look at his performance. And again, you know, you just see a really smooth delivery, very good mechanics, nice, easy velocity, easy gas is what they would say. Good ride up in the zone. Uh, slightly more over-the-top release point than most pitchers, but a lot to like about what we saw from Clayton Beater tonight. And look at those broad shoulders. I mean, this guy is very, very strong. So I feel I feel good about uh, his future. Uh, didn't have much offense tonight. Very nice piece of hitting from Giancarlo Stanton in the second inning. Took a 97-mile-an-hour fastball up and away and drove it for a line drive, single to right field. But more importantly, he looked good coming out of the box and coming down the line. So maybe the hype about his new body is real. Maybe it's something we can believe in. I choose to believe it because it's what I want to be true. <laughs> they also pointed out in the, here, like winning. in the broadcast that um, – he was getting set in the box a little bit earlier, getting ready to hit a little bit earlier, which is something that can kind of counteract his diminished reaction time as he gets older. So, look, uh, I'll say this about Stanton. Despite his struggles the last couple of years, this is a guy that we give a lot of crap to, but he has always handled New York well. He has always been and remained accountable. Uh, and this offseason, he seems to have made a real good faith effort to address the issues that have, have been dragging down his performance and have annoyed us as fans. He knows that we want him to be able to run the bases. He knows that we need him to be able to play the outfield. We saw him make a sliding catch in practice the other day. I like that kind of effort from a guy who makes $30 million a year plus uh, and is in his 30s. Still putting in the effort. Got to say, loving what I'm seeing from Stanton this spring. Son of a bitch. Uh, Ian Hamilton looked great tonight. He's going to be a huge part of the bullpen. He came out from nowhere last year, uh, and he struggled with some injuries, but he also looks like he's in great shape. Looks like he might have carved a little bit of muscle mass off of himself as well. He's kind of jacked for a pitcher. You don't necessarily want to be super jacked if you're a pitcher because all that muscle mass – uh, can put strain on your ligaments. So it's a good thing, I think, that he might be trimming down a little bit. In the bottom of the fifth, we saw something from Volpe that I hope we see 30-plus times this year, a hustle double on a line drive to the gap. They talked about how he's flattened out his swing. That is obvious. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a very good thing. He's also gotten stronger, so he'll still run into some home runs on some hanging sliders, but I'd much rather see him be the type of player – who hits line drives, makes contact, and uses his speed to create problems on the bases, hustles out doubles. As he matures as a player, if he can hit 270, he's going to swipe 40 or 50 bags. He's just that, that kind of speed, and he's that young enough that his prime is going to be long. So by the time he becomes a good hitter, you know, a good hitter in a couple of years, he might improve this year, but I, th I still think he's a ways away from being like a 270, 280 hitter. Uh, once he becomes that guy, he's going to be a real problem. Had a tough time on defense tonight, but uh, hey, he's human. Um, not every human being is, is built to be a home run hitting machine, by the way. Some guys are built to be scrappy line drive hitting, base stealing, pains in the ass. And I think Anthony Volpe very much has a chance to be that guy if he continue to play that way. More of that, please. If he 
can continue to play that way. I left a word out. So uh, that was it for the Yankees' hits tonight. couple of hits, so we don't have a win. But I do want to give out a belt because I, I did think there was one performance that stood out, and it was from Mr. Clayton Beater. Evan Long says, Beater may be a key part in the rotation. At some point, I want to see more of a breaking ball, and I want to see him master AAA a little bit first. Um, first belt for Clayton Beater. Uh, we got a really interesting uh, voicemail tonight that I want to play. Guy didn't leave his uh, name, so I'm just going to call him Caller. And this is longer than your typical voicemail. This is I usually try and keep the voicemails to about a minute. I'll I'll carve them up and you know, I don't want to make people listen, but this guy had two interesting points. It's about two and a half minutes long and, and um there's no other voicemail. So give it a listen and then we'll talk about it. Hey Derek. So the Yankees uh changed up their mantra a little bit this winter by finding some left handed bats doing some good things. Uh one thing that I also want them to change it for this year is I want them to start playing guys more. Juan Soto last year played in 162 games. We only got him for one year unless uh, something crazy happens in the off season. So I want him on the field for 162 games. Yes. I don't care. He's a rental. Use him up, wear him out. Same thing with uh, Verdugo. Get him on the field every single game because we're probably not going to re-sign him after this season. We're going to probably let him walk like we did with Ben Intendi. Uh, this way Spencer Jones has a spot. Or Soto, if we re-sign him. Um, so, yeah, it's just a quick thing. Get guys on the field more. If, if we got the best players, Aaron Judge, if he's not going to get injured, put him on the field 162 games. I don't care. That's what the Braves do. They keep their guys in the field every single day. So, let's do it this year. Also, another uh, another point. quick little thought is I think that we are going to re-sign Glaber Torres this winter. Obviously, anything could happen, but – Teams are starting to realize that they're paying way too much money for guys. The guys at the very, very top, the 1%, the elites, they're going to get paid. Like Shoei Otani, Yamamoto, Judge, soon to be Soto. These guys are going to get paid, and they're going to get paid insane amounts of money. However, all the other guys in the middle, they're not going to make $200 million, $150 million unless they're a starting pitcher or a really, really, really good player that's just not an elite player. Those other middling guys that are good, that have been getting paid $200 million, $150 million in years past, teams just aren't going to give them that type of money anymore. So Glaber Torres, he's going to have to sign. You know, if teams continue this trend, he's going to have to sign for less than $100 million. Ten seconds left. And uh, I think that he wants to stay with the Yankees. If teams aren't offering him big bucks, He'll just take the hometown discount, and he'll take four years, eighty million, or four years, seventy-five million, whatever it may be, and just stays with the Yankees. So, another quick thought. Anyways, thanks, Derek. Talk to you later. Bye. I appreciate it. I wish you'd left your name, but um, great call. Great. Call. More of that, please. All right, some some good points there, uh, especially on playing guys more. Juan Soto is twenty-five years old. I think you saw the stat recently that he was younger than Adley Rushman. So that's crazy. Uh, he's younger than a couple of guys who are on the top 100 prospects, prospects list for Major League Baseball. You're not going to wear him out by playing 162. Even if you want to give him a day off a month, I think it's fine to give guys a day off a month. I think everybody should shoot for 156 games. Get a day off a month, maybe line it up with either a rainout or a uh, – a day off in the schedule. That way you get two days off to rest and heal up. Now, if a guy's hurt, if a guy's actually hurt, obviously he needs more time off. But just resting guys just to rest guys doesn't seem to be working because the Yankees have had record numbers of injuries over the last several years, every year. So I agree 100% that we should play Soto pretty much every day. Soto, Verdugo, Judge, Anthony Volpe, Anthony Rizzo, Glaber Torres, I want all these guys playing 150-plus games. Absolutely. DJ's getting up there, so I have no problem giving him some days off. He's obviously had the foot issue in the past. He's had 
you know, he's, he's broken down a little bit over the last few years. Let's be completely honest. But if he's healthy, he might be a guy who would actually benefit from some days off because he is getting a little bit long in the tooth. John Carlo, I think you're going to need some days off, especially on AstroTurf. You know, uh, I, I just don't trust his legs, even though he's smaller. His legs have been so brittle that I just don't trust it. Now, if you want to play him in the outfield more, then maybe, yeah, uh, he gets more more days off. But if he's just DHing, I think you give him, you know, what, three days off a month maybe, and then just let him play. And he can give you 140 games as a DH. If you're going to be using him in the outfield, yeah, you're going to need to give him more time. But I'm completely fine with just using him as a DH this year. As far as Glaber Torres goes, another guy who played a ton of games. I think he led the Yankees in games played last year other than maybe Volpe. Uh, time will tell if the Yankees sign him. If he hits 290 with 35 home runs this year and plays good defense, somebody's going to give him a boatload of money. It might be the Yankees, it might not. Whether he gets $200 million is another story, but I do think you're onto something that teams seem to be kind of, you know, limiting how much they're paying to that second highest class of player. That's why Snell hasn't gotten the deal that he wants. So, um, hey, that is a, a very, very good call, and I want to give you some props there. You're smart. Yeah, here we go. You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. All right, let's take a look at the box score tonight because there really, there really wasn't much to look at, honestly. Um, you know, Yankees got two hits. <laughs> they gave up five hits, no runs on either side. Nice job by Marinacci. I forgot to mention him in the recap. 3.86 ERA on the spring, uh, 3.60 for Beater. So this must be his second appearance of the spring. Uh, Ian Hamilton threw, threw two scoreless innings. Uh, Masevich, Tully, Tanner Tully, just cruised through two innings. I think he threw about, what, he threw about 15 pitches? <laughs> Do they have it listed there? Um, let's see. He got uh, he threw 17 pitches and 14 strikes. <laughs> Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Um Frankie says we haven't seen this much or this we haven't seen less scoring since my Christian school prom. E yikes. <laughs> we'll handle the jokes, Frankie. We'll handle the jokes. Anyway, uh not a whole lot else to recap. 0-0 game, so we're going to wrap up a little bit early. Take a few questions. I got to get out of here. The save situation says Ryan Weathers is impressive, yeah, and I agree. And he looks a lot like his dad. I remember when the Yankees got David Weathers. He stunk right out of the gate, but had some big outs in the playoffs in that World Series run. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the recap. Game over, man. Game Obviously, over. Uh, not much uh, scoring, but that will change uh, as the spring goes on. The hitters get their timing back. And we start getting more at-bats from the regulars, the Juan Sotos, the Aaron Judges. Uh, Yankees play again tomorrow night. I believe it's on the yes schedule to cover. So if it's on TV, I'll, I'll do a recap. Uh, and, um, yeah. And then Sunday, I got a new episode of my podcast, We're the Dudes, coming out with my buddy Justin. So that will come out usually Sunday afternoon. Uh, we got some things lined up this spring. Uh, got Terrence coming back soon. About the midway point of spring training, we're going to cover the you know storylines from the first couple of weeks. A week after that, we're going to have Max Goodman make his second appearance of the year. He's going to be coming on regularly. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, we are 28 days from opening day, and we will be live after every game. And until next time, I'll see you.